Name. Emma Doyle. What is the difference between single camera setup and multi camera setup? Single camera setup, um, everything is shot using one camera. It takes longer to film because you know you have to do at different angles and you're only using one camera. Then it is edited later on after all the shots are taken. Whereas multi camera setup is you uh, use um, multiple cameras and they're all set up at different angles. Then when the scene is being acted out, the director picks um, which camera he wants on and uh, edits it live. It's called live mixing and it's quicker to do and they use it on soap operas. Describe two differences between studio recording and location recording. Studio recording is obviously in a studio so you have all your your set, your lights, your mics, all set up already. But on location, you could have to go out at like six in the morning, four in the morning, to whatever location you have, set up all your equipment, set up your mics. There could be like some technical difficulties because of where you are. So it's, it takes longer to film, whereas in the studio it'd be easier. In a studio, you're inside, and it, it doesn't matter what weather it is outside, you can save you're setting in like a snow you can have a studio of fake snow whatever but if you're outside on location it's all weather dependent describe some of the key conventions of film comedy um comedies are normally they occur normally in bright areas so that you know it's like humored um there are lots of different comedies slapstick dark humor all them kind of stuff um another thing with comedy is props Comedies tend to have more props, especially for slapstick comedy, because the props are usually designed to hurt the character to be comedy. Describe two more genres of film and television. Um, animation is filmed with 24 frames. Sometimes you use one of 24 frames or two of 24 frames. So it takes a lot longer because they're cartoon drawings and... Um, you know, they have to be able to move so obviously they have to draw them in different positions and then move them all together so that take longer um, thrillers or horrors are probably the other one they have a lot of jump scares so there's a lot of work put into them ones because there could be special effects CGI stuff like that and then there's like ghosts and all so you, that obviously has to be put in to make it look real explain the roles of the following personnel casting director a casting director is someone who chooses the actors they know what the director is looking for and um, so they they're there when you audition and they look at you and they're the ones that decide who who gets the job unless the director has a preference floor manager a floor manager just makes sure that the cameras are working and all set up and they normally give the, you know cues to people stuff like that Second assistant director. A second assistant director is like a, a an assistant director. It just does smaller jobs because the director has, the assistant director probably does a lot of the work, so it need, uh, they need help. So the second assistant director comes in. Director of photography. Director of photography, what I think is like um, someone who takes pictures, and you know for advertising as well, because you know. You have to have advertising of your film, and they also give the director a picture of what the set, what the director wants, like the set and the actors and the costumes and stuff like that. Film editor. A film editor w comes in after the film is shot, and they edit it all together, and he edits the scenes that need to be put into one other cut or whatever. He does that. Analyze the following production process that affect performance the camera script read a script read is you know it's helpful for you because you're you know the script before you go in before you go into like say your audition or whatever it gives you more grasp of the character the setting who you're going to be working with what you're going to be dealing with you know it just helps you out and it shows that you're prepared actor call times Actor call times are a time where an actor has to be on set or at an audition. And if you, say if, if it's for an audition, if you miss your call time and you're late, you don't get to audition at all. If you are on time, 
and you get the part and you arrive to set early and on time and you're ready to go it shows that you're reliable so you're more likely to get offered film roles and auditions and all because people know that you're reliable audition screen test um, this is just because basically for like the director and the casting director to see what you look like on screen and how well you know your audition it's better to know uh, your piece off by heart and, and like use the script as little as possible um, and just see what you, they just see what you do on camera and also if there's a lot of auditions they can always go back on your recording on your screen test and see your revamp you know ADR ADR is for dubbing so um, say if an actor knows his lines are going to be his or her lines are going to be dubbed over they could tend not to give a vocal performance as well as they should which could affect their actual performance mention three ways in which screen acting differs from stage acting in screen acting there are mics and booms and it's very up close and personal so you don't have to talk as loud but in theatre acting you have to project your voice um, when you're in screen acting they could have um, close ups, mid shots uh, side glances whatever, um, you know stuff like that whereas on stage the audience are looking at whoever the, the focal point is so they could be focusing on one person and it might not even be you um, with screen acting you could get there could be some script changes and you can only get your script the day before the play uh, the film or soap opera whichever one you're doing you can only get the script the day before and you uh, have lesser lines to learn I suppose because you're already doing scenes but in theater acting you have to know your script off by heart you're performing for about two hours straight sometimes and there's no chances to make mistakes Discuss the work of one film director, performer, practitioner whose theories on performance have been successfully applied to the craft of screen acting. Um, my practitioner that I'm going to speak of is Stanislavski. He has the Stan Stanislavski system, which in America is called the method system or something like that. The Stanislavski method. It's, he has the magic ifs, like what if this happened, what if that happened. You kind of have to think about stuff, that stuff when you're, when you're acting. Um, he's, his system is known everywhere, kind of. Um, Discuss the work of one film director and explain how his or her style of filmmaking may affect an actor's performance at camera. I chose the film director Quentin Tarantino because his films are very different to, to other films. They're very gory and bloody and violent and they're just different. I think actors, the difficulty they have is like they're not just going in and chilling and makeup done and then going on set to do lines. They have to work up blood and guts, a lot of CGI gore um, that would be difficult for an actor like what if you don't like blood and guts that kind of thing um, a positive about his films is that he tends to use some of the same actors for a few of his films like um, Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction they will have Tim Roth and uh, The Hateful Eight Tim Roth are in the three of them so it's kind of like he uses the same people and actors so when an actor goes on, they kind of already are already working with the same people. 